Get ready to be challenged. Billy Polson is here to turn you into an unexpected branding pioneer and to find your creative self. Billy is the owner of Diacate Fitness, and he is all about waking up your unique style and branding yourself and your company too in a whole new way on today's episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Show number 317, Never Have a Bad Hire Again by Barry Herps is on fire. This episode seems to be quite popular with our FBP family. Check it out so you will never have a bad hire again. Also, if you would be so kind to share on iTunes about the value you get from any of our episodes, everybody here at the Fitness Business Podcast would be so grateful. Hello, Fitness Business Podcast family. I am your host, Dory Nugent, and today our industry expert is Billy Polson. Billy is here to teach you and your staff how to blow your customers' minds in unexpected ways. Billy brings a lot of ideas and creative ways for you to stand alone in your market. We will hear from Billy in less than two minutes. First, a huge thank you to ISSA for supporting our show. Health club leaders, you work hard to ensure your members have the very best fitness experience, right? You need personal trainers who do the same. Become a preferred partner with ISSA and we'll deliver the best trainers in the industry to your club in a matter of days, fully certified and ready to work. And we'll help you keep those trainers by offering them exclusive discounted pricing on ISSA certifications. Because when your trainers stay, so do your valued members. Becoming a preferred partner with ISSA is absolutely free. Click above or visit issaonline.com slash fitbiz to get trainers now. Thank you, ISSA. Make sure you check out their variety of training certifications at www.issaonline.com. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's Fitbizpiration. Billy, what are your top three tips to becoming a branding pioneer? Number one, research your market and also research outside your market to truly understand what are the other products and services and brands offered out there. This information is going to really help you with knowing how to create unexpected branding experiences. All right, research is number one. Number two, Once you have that information, you have to differentiate in big ways, in bold and pioneering ways. Take an honest look at your brand and write down what you feel are the number one reason, the differentiators of why folks choose you over anyone else. Once you write down your number one differentiator, then ask yourself, how many other folks in your market have that same differentiator? If it's too many other people, then you've got to dig deeper. So differentiate in creative and unexpected ways. All right, number three, and this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but as a business owner, you have to prioritize and calendar in weekly time where you are focusing on growing your business. Don't just get stuck in the day-to-day of running the operations and managing everyone and running around to your heads cut off. Make sure that you have calendared in. If it's just an hour, that's fine. If it's four hours a week, that's better. As many hours a week as you can calendar in to grow your business and develop it beyond what it is now. Those are the minutes and the hours that are going to help you get to the next level. So put it on your calendar and stick to it. Fierce business builder, Carrie Keppel, is next week's guest. And after this week's full interview, I'll introduce you to Carrie, and you'll hear why you need to come back next week to hear her interview. MyZone has pioneered unique wearables with talking point technology that makes the difference. 
reach more members of your community, and keep them engaged for longer through motivation and gamification wherever they choose to work out. In the gym, at home, or outdoors, we're stronger together. Get in the zone at myzone.org. Let's transition into this week's interview with industry expert, Billy Polson. Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. Today, our expert is Billy Polson. Billy is the founder and co-owner of Diacati Fitness, and he's also the owner of The Business Movement, which is a consulting company that focuses on branding, operations, and system development for personal trainers and boutique studio owners. Billy, welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you so much, Dory. It's so good to meet you. <laughs> so glad to have you on. We've been trying for a while to get you on. And finally, the start here of the new year, we're able to get our calendars on the same page. So thank you for coming on today. I am psyched and honored. Thank you. Yes, I'm really excited about your topic. And that's, you're going to talk about branding, but like be, you know, an unexpected branding pioneer. And I'm just curious, how do we go from holding a Bachelor's of Science in Statistics from UNC. (laughs) Here's the journey. (laughs) To being a branding expert. Real quickly, how do we get from point A to point B in about 20 seconds? Go ahead. That's an excellent question. So it has been a journey. Uh, I'll give the first blunt answer. My mom made me major in math. My mom would not (laughs) major in what I wanted to major in. So the math major came along, but all the time I was a coach or a group exercise instructor on the side. I was doing technology all day and fitness all night. And uh, slowly I transferred away from technology and uh, like what, 26 years ago, started uh, doing full-time personal training. It has been a journey, but the way that I got to where I am today after 23 years of independent training, 17 years running a facility, So much of that time I spent doing grassroots learning of how to build my brand, how to stand out in unexpected ways. Back when the fitness industry was totally different, there was no social media, there was barely even a web presence. So a lot of the lessons that I've learned of running that independent practice and developing it, the same building our boutique studio, Diacati Fitness over the last almost 18 years, So many of those lessons, I want to pay it forward and help folks with building their brands and finding their ultimate success. I have to do a quick shout out. I just found out uh, 45 minutes ago, Tiacati Fitness, we've been open almost uh, 18 years now. For the 16th time out of those 18 years, over 16 years, we've been named to the best gyms list in San Francisco, and we just got named again for 2022. So it is an excellent day. I'm here to celebrate with you, Dory. (laughs) Well, congratulations to you and your entire staff. Well deserved to everybody. Thank you, thank you. (laughs) Great honor. So I think a lot of people can relate to your journey Just with me interviewing all these guests, you know, week after week, I hear a lot of people talk about kind of the same route with their fitness journey like yourself. So a lot of people can relate. It's pretty exciting. So speaking of exciting, let's talk about what it means to be unexpected a branding pioneer. (laughs) Definitely. I, as you said, I work with independent trainers and The idea of a brand, sometimes it will feel like a foreign concept for trainers. They're like, no, I just want to train. I just want to be doing fitness. But the idea of whether you're a boutique studio owner or a trainer of developing and really nourishing a rich and all-encompassing brand It is truly vital, especially in 2022. It is so vital to the idea of trying to stand out in your marketplace. Uh, Sure, you could run a business, you could run a boutique studio and and it just be about your logo and, and, and fitness programming. But 
your brand is literally ex ex exudes from every moment you have with a client, every element in your marketing, all of your products and services and how you're delivering them. That is the idea of your brand. And your job is to go above and beyond in offering all of those ideas in, again, above and beyond and unexpected ways. Our, our market, the fitness industry, is global now. So our competitive market is global. We're competing against people all across the world for the same type of services now. So now more than ever, your brand has to be unexpectedly unique. It has to truly like shock the pants off of people and, and rattle their cage and get them to stop the scroll so they will pay attention to you and the idea of possibly working with you. It, it is a, it's definitely more important now than ever. Yeah, and I was going to ask you the question, but you kind of already answered it is, you know, when it comes to branding, like true or false, is it just about your logo? But you already kind of said it's uh, not oh my gosh. about the logo. So much more. And I really believe it is, it's every single element, every moment that you have with a client. You're trying to take all those moments and all those marketing opportunities and really make them so memorable that your clients are talking about you at dinner parties and your clients are posting information about you on social media. Your job is to make everyone who is in contact with you, your marketing team, their word, spreading their word is so much more powerful than any marketing you can do yourself. So that is your goal. And that's why your brand is so much more than just your, again, your logo and your colors and your fonts. <laughs> it's so much more than that. I love that you just said that everyone you come in contact with should be a part of your marketing team. That's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> So let's take your definition of unexpected branding pioneer and let's give an example for a gym owner. Definitely. Let's first of all, let's start with the idea of expected versus unexpected. This is something that all of our business movement clients and all of us in-house that we've been focusing on as we head into 2022. So as a gym owner, let's start with your marketing. Think about what's expected in marketing as a gym owner or studio owner that, you know, you expect the website to be kind of a clean business card and, and show some facility shots and probably some folks working out and maybe their stock photos. We'll talk about those in a second, but you expect it to just have a clear representation of, of some fitness. Now, unexpected, which is what our goals are. Unexpected would be First of all, absolutely no stock photos. If any of you have stock photos on your website right now, that is your number one first piece of homework. But unexpected would be not just showing photos of kettlebells and photos of an empty gym. It would be showing the connectivity of a day in the life of your customers using your products and services. That's the responsibility that you have in marketing is truly, again, exemplifying what it would be like to use your products and services and how you will improve their lives. So your photos, your videos, again, your testimonials and kind of hearing from the words of your customers, that is what I'm challenging all of you to go above and beyond in your marketing and presenting those ideas that, again, are unexpected, not what you would uh, typically expect to see from a gym or especially an independent studio owner. You know, it's interesting you talk about testimonials because I just feel like the younger generation is all about reviews and testimonials. It's just funny how it's changed so much. I know with my daughter, she's always reading reviews, testimonials. She wants to hear what other people say. Me being from the, you know, the, the other generation, <laughs> that's not my first, you know, thought process. I'm more apt to like ask somebody if they know about this place or do you know about this product or have you tried it? So I find that interesting. You talk about testimonials. And it's interesting. So it does sound like you, even though you may not go and search for them, you would ask for them, right? Like you're asking friends. And so you, in some ways, you're still kind of using social proof. There's a, a statistic that says 80% of customers 
are going to read some type of review or testimonial before they make any purchase. 80%, that's four out of five people. And then there's another stat, very similar, 86% of folks are potential customers. They trust those reviews more than they trust what you say about your own business. They trust them rather than what you would write in your own marketing. So Again, four out of five customers are using that social proof. So that is one of the first pieces of advice I would give you as you're heading out and you're trying to build your marketing for 2022, take full advantage of your customers and their testimonials. Make sure that you are consistently gathering new testimonials. Make sure they're spread throughout all your marketing. Their words are so much more powerful than any words or text or photos that you could ever have. So make I, sure you're using those. I completely agree with you 100%. So now we talked about the gym owner and unique branding for them. Let's talk about maybe a personal trainer who's training in a park. Mm -hmm, which is so appropriate now. <laughs> I, let's say the, let's actually, let's use the customer experience as the example for them. So a personal trainer that's in a park, the customer experience, you would probably have pretty low level expectations of what you expect to find, right? Minimal equipment, maybe a plastic bottle of water from like a multi-pack from Costco and they got uh, maybe a sweat towel out there for you. But think about what could you do at an unexpected level as a personal trainer in a park? First of all, it is since barely pennies, if you have like a thermos, of coffee from your local coffee roaster and you have a nice cup of coffee waiting out there for them every morning or some hot water and a tea or maybe you have your green smoothie your number one favorite green smoothie that they get a shot of as they leave what can you do to again rattle the cage have it unexpected when they walk out to that field blow their mind of what is actually out there in the customer experience that you're offering I'm not asking you to do expensive things. I'm asking you to get creative with doing things that don't cost a lot of money, but would be really, really, uh, again, memorable and have it so that they talk about at dinner parties. <laughs> so I love the fact that you say blow their minds. I love yeah. that. That's such a great way to look at it. And I think you're right. They, they could kind of look at what they're already doing that maybe everybody else is doing and then maybe take it a step further. It sounds like you're recommending. And you just hit the nail on the head. In order to do this, one of the first steps is research. One of the first steps is knowing what is everyone in your competitive market doing on a baseline. No, like first, it's going to take knowing your competitors. That's one of the first questions I ask every client. Tell me your top three competitors. If that's not a knee-jerk reaction that you know in five seconds, that's, again, your first piece of homework. Know your competition, which is very different in 2022 than it was in 2021 and 2020. Uh, again, Peloton. Soul cycle, any type of tonal, all those home gym workouts are your competitors in addition to the trainer beside you in a park, in addition to the boutique studio down the street. So know your competition, the first piece of research. The second piece of research I'll give you to think outside the box is go to non-fitness industry businesses and brands and study their intake process. How are they doing their marketing? What are the ways that they're reaching out to potential customers or when you become a new customer, how are they connecting with you in unique ways? Look outside of our industry to really get those creative, amazingly unique ideas and bring them back. Like that's one of the best pieces of advice I can give you. Do the research in industry as well as outside of it. Now you talk about three pillars to unexpected branding to be to be an unexpected branding pioneer. Let's look at each one. First one, can you tell me about marketing and what do you think will be the most valuable use of a gym owner's time and budget? Gotcha. The first thing on marketing, and this is kind of similar to what I was mentioning during the teaser last week, know your customers and know their marketing methods. Make sure that you're very aware of exactly how your target customers would find you. And sometimes that means that can be a way that you aren't currently using to market. 
Just because everyone and their brother is on Instagram does not mean that's how your target customer would find you. So you have to be very smart and strategic in knowing your target customer and knowing them well enough to know where would they search for someone who's offering your services. That's the first thing. Once you know those typical or those target marketing methods, let's say it's maybe reading your local publication, let's say it's a Google search, and let's say it's uh, maybe Yelp, like they're writing reviews on Yelp. Once you know those, that's where you aim all your firing power and you really focus all your budgets and time on upgrading and being very up to date in all of those areas. So again, being very strategic about where you're putting your time and money is my best piece of advice on all of your marketing. And then again, being unexpected. Look at all your competitors on those same marketing platforms. What are they doing and how can you go above and beyond in really, again, stopping the scroll on your brand? All right. Pillar number two, customer experience. I can see how it can help retain members, but how will it drive new members into facilities? <laughs> it's that dinner party idea. It's that idea of if you are doing incredible things that are memorable to them. Like, okay, so I'll give the example of this. If you, if a customer walks into your facility for the first time and they, they've never been to the gym, they don't, they don't typically go to the gym. Again, they, what they're expecting is they're hopefully expecting a nice person to greet them. And maybe again, a plastic water bottle or free bottle of water, or even maybe just a water fountain. Reverse that. Rewind. How can you recreate that first interaction with them in an unexpected level? Again, maybe they walk in the door. You know they're walking in the door. You know their first name. So you're like, hey, Dory, today's your first day with John. Welcome to the gym. We're psyched to have you. Here's a glass of water with a little orange slice on top. We also have some seasonal tea around the corner if you want to grab that. Uh, I'm going to walk you back and show you the locker. I'll show you how to set up your locker. Think about what, what I call the 11-star experience. Dory, have you ever heard of that, the 11-star? It's, it's something, it was Brian Chesky. He was the, he's the founder of Airbnb. It was an exercise that he did with all of his team when they were trying to come up with their new Airbnb experiences. And it's a way of thinking far beyond the five-star experience and just thinking out of this world creatively about, again, creating a moment that folks will talk about. That's the customer experience that I'm challenging you all to think about. Think out like six stars beyond the five star. Uh, if you haven't heard it, again, search Brian Chesky 11 star customer experience. It's a great, great interview to listen to. All right. I wrote that one down. So I'll be sure to check <laughs> that one out. Let's talk about the final pillar, products and services. So how do we focus on products and services? Definitely. It all, again, it's going to start with your client. Think about your ideal target customer, the folks who, who you love working with, they love working with you the most. Think about what their main goals or their challenges or pain points are. Like, let's, let's say that they're, they want to lose 30 pounds. They're, they're coming to you for weight loss, which is one of the most common things that we have in the fitness industry. When they come to you, Go get a chalkboard or a whiteboard and get a get a bunch of members on your team and sit in a room and brainstorm all of the products or services or even tools or resources that that client will need in order to meet and achieve their goal. So let's say they need a fitness programming. They need a thorough assessment. They need a movement screen on the nutrition side. They, they definitely need some type of tracker for the nutrition, maybe a registered dietitian, maybe a personal chef service, maybe a meal planner. You're just trying to make a giant brainstorm list of all the products and services that that person would need. Once you have that list, then you kind of have the pick list of thinking, okay, what are all the things that we can pull underneath our brand that would create these comprehensive programs and products to help them meet their goals more quickly? 
So it starts with knowing your customer. It starts with creating that giant brainstorm list and then prioritize it based on what can you pull into your brand and offer as this unbelievable, again, efficient but comprehensive program to meet their goals. That's my best advice on that. As you head into 2022, start with that brainstorm. All right, well, here comes my final question. This is going to be a tough one, but out of those three pillars, which one do you think everyone should focus on the most? Mm. <laughs> you know, I one, 100%, I'm going to have to go with customer experience. I, I almost even kind of cheated by mentioning it in both of the other elements, didn't I? In the marketing. Your customer experience truly starts in your marketing. How they interact with your website is the customer experience of your website, right? Is it easy to use? Is it pleasurable? Is it fun? And then on the backside, the products and services, your customer experience is how you are presenting and sharing those products and services. So your customer experience, it, again, it is uh, it almost is synonymous with brand because it does exude into every single element of how you're offering, what you're offering. And it is, again, the it's creating moments and opportunities for you to just connect with your clients and to give them these unforgettable memories and unique offerings that they can't help but talk to other people about. That's your goal. So customer experience is hands down where I put my money on that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I just had a facial, which I've had many, you know, over my few short years I've been here on this. <laughs> on this earth. But um, she did a couple of very small, I'm sure very inexpensive, different things that I was just, I left there and I just was totally wooed by the, like just the small little different things that she did compared to all of the other places that I've been to. Again, minimal, but enhanced my customer experience greatly. I'm like, I'll be back. Cause I just, I ate it up. I loved it. You know? That's, and those little experiences, those tiny things, tiny. that's what I, that's where you get that creative inspiration. So what I would say is just like you just did, Dory, everybody on this call, go out, go get a pedicure, go to your favorite spot, go to your nice restaurant, go to a hotel, look far outside of our industry for inspiration throughout marketing, throughout customer experience, throughout products and services. That's where you'll gain that creative, again, that inspiration to really go above and beyond. It, a lot of my clients, uh, our business movement clients, they did not get into the fitness industry because they wanted to become a marketing pro. That is not the reason they did it. So being creative in these ways can be challenging. And that, that that's why, I, again, I try and link you all up with ideas that make it easier, ways and, or concepts of trying to, to gain that inspiration without having to just beat your head against the wall. Well, Billy, thank you so much for coming on today. My One of my biggest takeaways, what you just said, and that is just look at other places for inspiration. They're out there. You just sometimes have to pay attention to them. So thank you so much. I love all your expert advice, your tips, and most of all, your enthusiasm. I can tell how passionate you are about this and that that's great. It just excites everybody for 2022. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dory. And I mean this, if ever I can help you or anyone listening, I'm here to help. Don't hesitate to ever reach out to me. Well, we certainly will make sure your contact information is directly linked with this show. So yes, they will, anybody out there listening or watching has a question, they will follow up with you and you can just work with them directly. And hey, congratulations on your brand new award. That's awesome. Uh, thanks, Dory. I, I'm definitely going to go and celebrate with the dogs. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to Billy Paulson for joining us today. I really appreciate how open and passionate he was to share all of his expert advice with all of us, our FBP family, myself, and everybody out there listening. I have posted Billy's contact information on our show notes, so please head on over to www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com or when you subscribe to the best show notes in the podcast world, they are emailed directly to you. Subscribing to the show notes can also happen at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. 
In 30 seconds, I'll introduce you to our amazing guest, Carrie Keppel, who is coming to the show next week. G'day, it's JT here. And I was talking to Blair McKaney, the CEO of one of our sponsors, MX Metrics, the other day. And I gave him a hard time about his company's tagline, defeating mediocrity. By definition, that means he's excluding the majority of the market. But Blair just wouldn't budge. He only wants to work with operators who want to punch mediocrity in the face. Really smash it. So I've talked to a few of his customers, like Joe Shirelli from Gainesville Health and Fitness, and yeah, it's for real. While Joe is a nice guy, he isn't satisfied with mediocrity either. He's crushing it as well. So I'm still dubious about selling only to operators who want to defeat mediocrity. But if this resonates with you, I reckon you should check them out. Go to mxmetrics.com. But remember, only if you're interested in smashing mediocrity. Quickfire 5. Curious to know what movie character Carrie Keppel would play if she could play anyone? Well, stay tuned and also find out more about her topic for next week's episode. Carrie, welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here on the podcast. I'm excited for your interview next week. But before we get there, we have four fun questions to see what your answers are going to be. And then your final question, you're going to pitch your episode to us for next week. So let's get started with question number one. And that is, what is a life lesson you learned from the pandemic? Well, that's a heavy question because there's a lot. (laughs) I think that's for everybody, but I think just the realization of society's value on fitness and wellness is really our biggest foe that we're facing. And it's really the biggest problem that we need to solve. The impact on our healthcare systems and and the economy, if we were to be able to solve this would be absolutely world changing. And obesity, you, you know, it's truly the number one underlying gateway to all diseases and COVID highlighted that even further. So Sadly, though, you know, many are still in denial and and government leadership isn't pushing this message like it should. So exercise, good nutrition, mental well-being are the most critical components to to protect our lives, not only uh, for ourselves, but our families. And it's just we need to elevate this as a top value to more people. All right. Fantastic answer. I like that. You took a little different spin and approach. I, I, I appreciate that. All right, here we go. Number two, if you could play a character in any movie, <laughs> you're already laughing. I love that. <laughs> what character would it be? All right, I've given this one some thought. I'm landing on Demi Moore and G.I. Jane. Ooh, there's a power player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, a, she's a badass woman that succeeds in a man's world and uh, against all odds with obstacles really stacked against her. So, hoo ya. Hoo ya. Mic drop right there. Fantastic. <laughs> I love that one. All right, here we go. Please complete this statement. Sunday morning, you can find me. Most every Sunday morning, you can find me enjoying a coffee in my pajamas, playing with our five-year-old son and our dogs, just resting and recharging so that I can take on another week. Perfect. I love that answer. I'm trying to think who I just had on that said kind of something similar. And I'm like, thank goodness there's somebody out there besides myself that's just hanging out on a Sunday morning. Most, out. most guests are like, oh, I'm mountain biking or I'm running or and I'm like, <laughs> you know. No, no, not me. <laughs> We love that. All right. What is your number one book recommendation for all of our FBP listeners? Man, I have so many. I love Audible and I listen all the time. So I'll give you the one that I'm reading or listening to right now, which is called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And he's a former Navy SEAL. I know this is my second military reference. I don't know why. I've never been in the military, I swear. But it's just, it's got powerful messages and self-leadership. And this guy is, you know, there's a lot to learn from, from his work ethic. Oh my God. One of my all-time favorite books. I ask every guest, if you know David Goggins, please send them to the fitness business. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've got David Goggins. I got Jocko Willink and Mark yeah. Trell. If anybody out there knows anybody, and <laughs> them, send them my way. One thing, Carrie, and you probably will agree with me because I'm a huge audible book person myself. I couldn't tell you last time I physically read a book, but I've I know. I listen to them all the time. 
is you have to listen to that book. Oh yeah. Cause they treat it like a podcast. Yes. They read it and then they do a podcast in between chapters. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. Like he gets on there and he'll like take the story. Like he'll give you more details about the story. It's again. So good. Yeah. So good. All right. Moving on. Here we go. This is your 30 second elevator. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to put your sales hat on here okay. and tell everybody why they need to come back next week for your episode. Well, if you own or operate a gym, you're still likely battling the, the road of the pandemic recovery, likely with less members than before. But regardless if it, if you're in a position where your business is whole again or not, the pandemic taught us that we can't rely on membership dues revenue to survive alone. And we need to, we need a better revenue strategy to survive the unexpected. And in this podcast, you'll hear my take on maximizing revenue and high margin opportunities to really grow your bottom line and stay in business during the tough times. You can't afford to miss next week's episode with owner and CEO of Style Studios, Carrie Keppel. Carrie is here to help you improve your secondary income and to explain the importance of having not one, but two sales calendars. Your business needs this episode. So make sure you subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player or even better yet, let us do the work for you and we'll send you the show. Subscribe at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our founding partner, Active Management. Our partners, Keep Me, My Zone, Discover Strength, Tribe Team Training, One Fit Stop, and ISSA. We also want to thank our advertisers, Rex Roundtables, MX Metrics, and Vapor Fresh. We believe what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but woven into the lives of others. Music.